O oh my God, O oh my God, unite the hearts of thy servants and reveal to them thy great cause. May they follow thy commandments and abide in thy law. Help them, O oh God, in their endeavor and grant them strength to serve thee. O oh God, leave them not to themselves, but guide their steps by the light of thy knowledge and cheer their hearts by thy love. Verily thou art the mighty, the powerful, the omnipotent. You know, you don't live long. I'm old now, 92. But it seemed like my life's gone like that. That's what I would say to anybody. Your life goes before you know it. And in the end, there you are, your face with eternity. My name is Jack Edwards McCants. I was born in Dallas, Texas. My father would say a prayer for every meal, you know, like we had breakfast, lunch, and dinner. He always had a prayer, he said. And so I was raised in a religious atmosphere in that sense, but we're not big church goers until I got to be a teenager. And I fell in love with a girl, <laughs> and she was going to the church, so I went to the church. <laughs> that simple. And I did feel the urge to be a minister while I was going to that church. And that's why I went to theology school. And the people there were extremely kind to the students. So I had a good experience there, except I didn't find myself being fulfilled in what I wanted in religion. It, it just was all, you know, from my viewpoint, this is just Jack talking, but there's a long road from the head to the heart. And most of what I found there was head religion, not heart religion. Then all of a sudden I was drafted. I wasn't expected to be drafted into the Army. And while I was there, I met my first Baha'i, Stephen Soom. And he gave me this book, God Passes By. I didn't like the cover of the book, so I didn't read it. But I kept the book. And I came back to Texas after I was released. I was married and we had two little boys and I decided I would go back and take another semester at, and see if I could pick up where I left off. And at the end of the semester, they asked me to write, you know, what I thought of. We had studied in class. And I wrote an answer to let them know I knew what they taught. And I, in my last sentence, I said, I don't believe a word of it. And so this man, and Dr. Gailey was passing out exams after they were graded. And mine, he held to last. And other people left the room. He said, Mr. McCants, can I speak to you? And he, and he looked at me with such kind eyes. He said, Mr. McCants, I don't think there's a place here for you anymore. And I said, I agree with you. And uh, my wife left me then because she had been a missionary up in, in Alaska before I married her. So, she left me and took the two little boys with her. I didn't see them for 10, 11 years. So I was going through this agony, loss of my children, my family, and I still hurt very badly from the, my experience in Korea. And I had a friend who had been in the tank corps over in uh, Korea, too. His name was Harry Craig, and he and I, he got interested in Baha'i. I heard about it before I did. Uh, although I had heard about it and gotten that book when I was in training. So we went to a little fireside, and I got interested in it a little bit. And I didn't know what to do. We're the happiest people I'd ever been around in my life. Now, I don't know what that would mean to a lot of people, but when you're suffering a lot of grief and loss and hurt, to be around genuinely happy, happy people, it means everything to you. And so I don't know, I just knelt down on my knees and prayed my heart out and said, God, I'm gonna get the Bible and open it, put my finger on whatever verse it falls on, I will give you my life, I will do. And I opened it to Acts 10, 20. And the verse said, Arise, get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing in your heart, for I have sent them. From that experience, it confirmed me in being a Baha'i. I moved to Atlanta and took a job setting up this, this, this government program, Job Corps. 
in seven states. Glenford Mitchell was secretary, and they were interested in opening up the faith. I was the only person in the South. So I started traveling everywhere from Texas to North Carolina to Key West, Florida. I stayed on the road all the time. Mr. Sears had appointed me an auxiliary board member. And then later, he moved to Africa and wanted me to come there as his executive board member, and I went there. I was there with Bill about maybe a year and a half, but I got enough to know that I wanted to pioneer. So I went to Western Samoa as a pioneer, and I was married in Hawaii before I left. I came back to the States and had to get get work here, so I did that, and uh, then I was elected to the NSC, and I served under 16 years. Purify our souls and our attachment to our material funds. We are about to witness the giving of the most holy book to the entire world. We will march together to emblazon the name of Baha'u'llah throughout this planet as we work to complete the work of ark building in Haifa. The thing that I so loved about most of the hands that I knew is they were the greatest listeners and they taught your heart. As I mentioned earlier, from the head to the heart is a long road. And they taught both the head and the heart, but they taught you and they loved you. And it was real, man, it was not fake. They really love you. And I never forget that because it, it changes your life. And if you're a young person, and you're really going to survive heart, mind, and soul, from my viewpoint, you have no choice but to be a Baha'i. You have to learn to be a Baha'i, and it's a slow process. You can't just learn to be a Baha'i overnight. And I'll tell you, seriously, it's difficult to get along with some of the people who are Baha'is because they haven't been Baha'i long, and they've got the habits they bring into the faith when they become Baha'i. And so you're learning to live together as the oneness of mankind. And you come from such different backgrounds in this country. And to bring you together into one little community and to love each other, it's a growth process. It comes day by day. And what it will teach you to do if you're going to survive, you'll learn to pray. And the great thing about the Baha'i is they have hundreds of prayers revealed by the manifestation of God and His Son, Abba Baha. They're perfect prayers. We've never had that before. For every single purpose in the world, we have prayers revealed by God Almighty Himself. Now that's amazing, man. You think about it. Every one of them is the Word of God. You think about that, what it really means. The Holy Spirit enshrined in the human language is what it means. And you have access to it for every need you have. God will guide you into the next world. And that's what you're preparing your soul for all your life is to function in the next world. Because that's going to last as long as you can think of eternity. It goes on and on. The worlds of God are without limit. And so that's what we're preparing to function in that world. And that's what this life is about. This is the most important time you and I will ever live and I pray to God each of us seize our opportunity to raise this banner to help suffering humanity discover the light has come into this world and just say this wonderful name, Baha'u'llah.